Hello? Well, hello, and thank you for patiently waiting for another video. This voiceover might be a little bit chaotic today. There's a storm outside, the dishwasher's going, hopefully I can edit out all the background noise. As always, I am going to be doing some cleanup, which always starts with trimming my natural nails. If you're new here and wondering what I'm always resting my hand on while I paint, this is a mini crumb vacuum that I use to clean up nail clippings and dead skin off of my towel. While I do that, I wanted to share with you that I now have a favorites page on the Beyond Polish website. This is a page dedicated to all of my favorite and most used products that Beyond Polish offers in order of use all in one place. We're talking prep products, lamps, tools, gel polishes. All of my must-have go-to items will be listed here and I imagine this page will continue to grow as I try more products. They've also got the first kit that I ever purchased when I first started doing my nails at home so that's kind of cool. I personally tend to get a little bit excited and overwhelmed when I'm shopping online for nail products. So I figured having somewhere to start may make your shopping experience a little bit easier, especially if you're following along with one of my videos or recreating a look of mine. And by the way, this is not a sponsored video, but I am a Beyond Polish affiliate, so you can use the Beauty Vault at checkout for 10% off your order. Thank you to Beyond Polish for creating a page dedicated to all of my favorite products. I will link it for you guys in my description box. I really hope you find it helpful and that it makes your shopping experience a little bit easier. Okay, back to the video. I am softening up the skin around my nails with my Sally Hansen Instant Cuticle Remover. I'm pushing them back and I'm gently trimming off any dead skin with my cuticle nippers. I sometimes skip past this part so that it's not too repetitive, but I left it in today because it is very satisfying to watch. When I'm done, I just wipe my nails clean with a little bit of alcohol on a lint-free wipe and I move on to sizing my tips. As you know, I love the Savvyland coffin shaped tips that I've been using in my last few videos, but they don't come in different shapes. So I hunted around Amazon for different affordable tips and I came across this Una Gela brand. So far, I'm really loving these almond shaped ones. I've ordered a few other shapes. I am sizing these to my natural nails, making sure that they fit from sidewall to sidewall. And as always, I have to reshape my thumb tip because because my natural nail is very square at the cuticle. If you're using any kind of cuticle softener or remover, you always want to cleanse your nails to remove any excess oil that's left behind. I usually use the CND one and a lint-free wipe. When I want a long-lasting manicure, like up to three weeks, I usually follow this step by applying my pH bond and my acid-free primer. But today, I'm gonna skip those steps and instead I'm gonna be applying the Madame Glam peel-off base coat that I've been trying out. I want to remove this set relatively soon and the peel-off base coat makes that possible with minimal effort. I'm applying a thin coat and curing it in my LED lamp for 30 seconds as instructed on the back of the bottle. The removal process when applying a peel-off base coat is much easier. It doesn't require any filing, just soaking in hot, soapy, oily water. That's how I remove them. They just pop right off. Next, I'm applying a thin coat of my Amy Lee Builder Gel and I'm curing it in my LED lamp for 45 seconds. I'm 
I'm chemically etching my tips before applying them and chemically etching does save you time if you don't want to use an e-file to do it but if you want to really make your nails last I would recommend filing them with an e-file and chemically etching and now I'm just applying my tips as usual you know the drill I'm applying a bit of builder gel to my tip I'm placing it at my cuticle and gently pressing it down the nail making sure to remove any air bubbles and then I flash cure using my gelish touch LED lamp I'm always a bit indecisive when it comes to my tip application sometimes I want to apply the tip right at my cuticle other times I like to leave a little space between my cuticle and the tip so it looks more natural which may cause a little bit of builder to ooze out and then that requires me to file down the edge of the tip where it meets my natural nail even though it's more work I think I prefer the latter because it looks way more natural once the natural nail grows out when I apply my tip right at my cuticle it could sometimes still ooze out builder and then when it grows out there's like a harsh gap between my cuticle and where the tip started do you know what I mean I hope that makes sense I do like to leave a little bit of space and then um, just file down the tip to kind of melt it into my natural nail once all my tips are on I'm giving them a full cure in my LED lamp and I'm moving on to filing and shaping I am just bringing down the length a little bit um, I'm cleaning up the sides I'm removing the surface shine with a 180 grit file and then I switch over to my e-file and a sanding band to smooth out the cuticle area to give it a more natural look and then after that I switch over to a buffing block to further smooth out the surface and then I wipe off the excess dust with a little bit of alcohol on a you guessed it lint-free wipe
Next, I'm applying a bit of acid-free primer to the cuticle area, which I always do. This makes the edges of my tips melt into my natural nail. If you're struggling to make your cuticle area look natural, you may want to try this trick. It is my go-to. It's the best. Just try it. On to gel polish application. I will be using OPI Funny Bunny today. This is one of my all-time favorite shades. I find OPI polishes to be extremely fluid, so after I apply each coat, I like to quickly flash cure the nail before moving on to the next. That way I don't have to worry about flooding on the sides of my nails. And I think in total I did, did I do two or three coats? I want to say two, but I kind of feel like I might have done three. Anyway, I cured each coat for 45 seconds. So you could probably just finish off with a top coat here and call it a day because who doesn't love a funny bunny manicure? But I'm going to go one step further and switch it up a bit. I found yet another gel polish brand on Amazon that I have been loving and I've been looking forward to sharing with you. This brand is called Rargism. For a few weeks, I was like trying to pronounce this to myself in preparation for this voiceover, thinking what in the fresh hell does this even stand for? And then upon closer inspection of the boxes that the polishes came in, I discovered that it is an acronym and it stands for Run and Rock, Just Something Magical which still doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it makes more sense than Rargism. Anyway, I ordered like 10 or 12 shades from them. I will do a dedicated swatch video either on my Instagram or my TikTok. If you don't follow me there, you should because it will encourage me to post little things that aren't worth posting on YouTube. But anyway, I have been using their pearl finish shades as toppers and I have been absolutely loving the outcome. I've got three shades to show you today, which I think would look absolutely gorgeous over Funny Bunny. The first shade is 141. Next, Next is shade 143 and lastly we have shade 105. All gorgeous but I decided to go with 141. I mean just look at how gorgeous that is. Are you kidding me? This shade perfectly complements the cool undertone of Funny Bunny. I think they are a match made in heaven. I don't know if I can wear Funny Bunny on its own ever again without this topper. So I just did one coat of 141 cured in my LED lamp for 45 seconds and again I could finish off with a top coat here and call it a day, but I decided to go one step further and add a French tip. This McCart gel polish in the shade Blanc is a really great opaque white, perfect for French tips, and I will be using my stamping jelly again today. I've used this a few times before in previous videos, and it's become one of my favorite ways to do French tips. If this is your first time here and you want a more in-depth explanation on how to use it, I would recommend watching those videos first because I'm not really gonna go too deep into it today, I'm just gonna do it. So I like to take my jelly out of the base completely because I have more control over what I'm doing that way. I can kind of manipulate the jelly around my fingertip. I sometimes like to reinsert my tip into the jelly to get the sides, and then I clean up any excess with a brush and some nail surface cleanser. And then if my smile line needs a little bit of touching up, I'll do so using my skinny tip nail art brush until I'm happy with it. And when I am happy with my shape, I just carry it in my LED lamp for 45 seconds and move on to the next.
you could once again finish off with top coat and call it a day, which I ended up doing at the end, or you could zhuzh up this look even more by playing around with some rhinestones and pearls. I had these little ones that I applied to my thumb on my right hand to show you. Cute, right? And then I found these little half beads on Amazon that look like little pearls, which I thought would look really cute as well, so I wanted to show you how you could go about applying these if that's what you're into. I used the Kiara Sky Bling It Gel and their non-wipe top coat. So I just pick out all the different size beads that I want with my double-sided picker tool, and then I dollop a little bit of my Bling It Gel onto my palette. I apply a thin coat of the non-wipe top coat to the whole nail, and then I dot the Bling It Gel where I want the pearls to go, and then I just place them. If I were keeping this look and I didn't end up wiping it off at the end, what I would do at this point is flash cure the beads before moving on to the next nail. But like I said, I didn't end up keeping the pearls because I actually tested them out on my index finger on my right hand, and I noticed that the iridescence wore off within a day when I was washing dishes and things. So if you're gonna do this, I would recommend finding a way to like encapsulate the beads without making them look too bulky with a little top coat or something to protect the iridescent finish or just get better ones. I won't be linking these beads in the description box because I don't recommend them. I've already returned them for this reason, but uh, if I find better ones, I'll let you know. I just kind of wanted to give you the idea if you wanted this look, this is what it would look like. I, like I said, really liked my look without the pearls, so I ended up wiping them off. I think it goes without saying that uh, I think this is one of the prettiest nail looks I've done. It'll probably be my go-to look when I want to feel pretty. I just love what the almond shape does for my sausage fingers. They look so dainty. This video technically has four different looks in one. You can choose which one you want to go with. I chose to wipe off the pearls and just finish off with a top coat and cuticle oil, but you got options. I, like I said, absolutely love this look. I really hope that you love it as well. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. I hope it was worth the wait. If you did, please give this a thumbs up. Everything that I used will be listed in the description box below along with my Beyond Polish favorites page as well as my Amazon storefront. Thank you guys very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, staying subscribed, and I'll see you in my next one. Okay, love you, bye.